Hello with Explorers, thanks for joining us again and welcome back to another informative video on our YouTube channel. I want to thank you for joining us. Today we are looking at the reason why coups are making a comeback to the African continent. These military coups are really actually coming back. But the big question here today in this video is to the reason why what is driving these coups. So without any more delay, let's just dive straight into it. Successive coups in Africa would only further destabilize the African region. In pointing this out, power grabs on constitutional military takeover or coup d'etat are back in the continent of Africa. In the past few years, there has been a rise in the spot of successful and attempted coups across the African continent. These coups are threatening to overturn the democratic gains African countries have made in recent decades. Simply by demonstrating how easily power can be wrestled from brandishing gun and undermining the constitution, these coups are weakening existing political institutions, encouraging political violence and increasing the prospects of civil war. It all began in November of 2017 when the estuit Zimbabwean president Robert Mugabe was placed under house arrest, impeached and eventually removed as president and party leader of Zimbabwe African National Union Patriotic Front, the ZANU-PF, by some elements of the Zimbabwe Defense Forces. This was followed by two successive coup d'etats in Mali in 2020 and in May of 2021. The Malian army, led by Vice President Colonel Asimi Gauti, captured interim president Ba Dev and acting Prime Minister Mokhtar Kwan. This military takeover eventually led to the suspension of Mali from the Economic Community of West African States, co-known as ECOWAS, and the African Union as well in June of 2021. France too halted its joint military operations with Malian army over the coup, but resumes operation a month later, in July 2021. An unsuccessful coup d'etat also took place in Niger just two days before the swearing-in of President-elect Mohamed Bassoun. The two most recent successful attempts took place in Guinea and Sudan. In September 2021, the Guinean government, led by ex President Alpha Conde, was dissolved and replaced by a military junta led by Mamadou Dumbuya, the coup interim president of Guinea. To the point that, in looking at this, the reasons for the coup were familiar, allegations of corruption, unavailability of the massive resources for infrastructural deals, the president condemned controversial constitutional reforms to allow himself to run for presidential terms uh, for further terms to the point out. In looking at that, in Sudan, a fragile power sharing agreement between Sudanese civilians and military leaders that was in place for the past two years come to an abrupt end when the military led by General Abdel Fattah Abutan seized power and dissolved civilian government of Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdouk of October. Uh, 25th, 2021. General Bhutan's reasoning for this particular issue, school in avoiding the civil war, has been widely rejected and condemned by international community. The World Bank has suspended its own uh, its aid to Sudan, and the AU African Union has suspended Sudan's membership until the civilian government is reinstated. But the question here is why are coups making it back uh, to the African continent? So the point out. In the early post-colonial decades, coups were rampant and common across the continent. The coup leaders often tended to offer the same reasons for toppling government, for corruptions, poverty, mismanagement, and restoring rule of law, and promised to restore democracy. Coups tended to be successful due to the level of popularity or popular support they enjoyed, especially at the local level. Allegations of endemic corruption and poverty were the principal justification, so the point out, given for organizing coups. Such justifications resonate with Africans as they accurately depicted the on-ground resilience or also realities of their respective countries. But the irony of promising to strengthen rule of law by taking power forcefully and breaking those same rules of law is self-defeating in nature. They are both, to the point out, the wave of democracy and the reintroduction of military politics and also decades of 1990s and 2000s, providing a glimmer of hope for civilian rule. 
This was suspended also or supplemented by the promise of African Union and other African regional bodies to outrightly reject unconstitutional changes of government. In the context of the Lome Declaration adopted in 2000 and the African Charter on Democracy, elections and governance of 2007, however, democratic principles of free transparent elections, freedom of speech, human rights and other being adhered to. A major concern has been that the African elections are becoming increasingly contentious and marked by fear. Worryingly, Afrobarometers looking at survey conducted indicated that only a minority of Africans believe elections help produce representatives and accountable leadership. If you are new to this channel, we will encourage you to subscribe and share our videos to your different network. Despite this, organizing coups with intentions of breaking the constitutional order to reform a democracy is an unviable justification. Coups with at least an anti-corruption rhetoric have not been the vehicle for social revolution. Neither is there any such phenomenon of a good coup. So to point out in quotes, so to point out as well, in almost all instances, coup leaders in Africa have often proved to be just as corrupt as regimes they have replaced and failed in their attempts to better the life of ordinary citizens. Moving ahead, the question here is how does African organize itself to move forward in this particular circle? It is important to acknowledge that the phenomenon of recurring coups in Africa must be assessed against the prevailing conditions of international systems and its shifting global order. The structures, motivations, and conditions that incite coups in Africa, whether on the national slash democratic uh, front, so to point out, on the global front, have not changed much. On the one hand, democracy across Africa has not made satisfactory progress in national politics as to prevent return to authoritarianism on the continent of Africa. Citizens' debate on governance and democracy in Africa has resolved over the two last decades, so to point out, with a particular focus on quality of election process and also legitimacy, accountability and performance of leaders. However, the practice, the African regional organizations, including the African Union, have reduced democracy to the holding of elections and selecting respect for uh, term limits. On the other hand, the possible evidence of external involvement or sponsorship of coups cannot be ignored. Russia, particularly, has been notorious in this regard and its missionary groups appears to play a deeper role in countries such as Mali, Libya and also Central African Republic. Even the roles of the United States has been questioned. These developments taking place in parallel to three broad trends, the surge of foreign interest in Africa, duped as the new scramble for resources and influence in the continent, a democratic recession in sub-Saharan Africa with weakening of the democratic institutions and civil society, and the emergence of new and subtle methods of overturning constitutional mandates at presidential terms limits and also subsequent winning rigged and marsh elections. In looking at this, to reverse this trend of growing coups in Africa, both African leaders and external partners will have to play a crucial role. To reverse this trend of growing coups in Africa, both African leaders and external powers will have to play a crucial role. On his part, Mohammed Dan Suleiman argues that African countries need to quantitatively democratize and truly decolonize. African regional organizations must engage effectively with the civil society, only paying lip service to core values like accountability, transparency, civic responsibility will not suffice to forestall a future coups. Major powers, on the other hand, must retain the recessions, the reassessment, so to point out in all traditions of shaping engagement with Africa. It is vital to recognize that the partner with African states to generate productive and viable medium and long-term benefits, viewing and engaging with African states simply as a destination for short-term returns will be counterproductive. Africa is not a, supplic a supplicant as a pointed actor anymore. In fact, African states have been able to accept accession agencies in external engagement. It is imperative that African Union and African regional economic communities use their powers of sanctioning on constitutional preservation of power 
in a preactive rather than a reactive manner. Or else, if military leaders in African countries continue to seize power with impunity, this will enable a vicious circle of proliferation of further coups. If you are new to our channel, we will encourage you to subscribe and share our videos to your different network. Hopefully, we've been able to inform you with regards to this issue, with regards to the African continent. If you are new to our channel, we'll encourage you to watch some of our informative video with regards to the continent of Africa. We want to thank you for watching. We are looking forward to meeting you soon in our next episode. Have a good day. Bye-bye.